to we have to uh, appreciate the uh, and and give credit to Carlsonite if you haven't heard of this. It's the anti-aging biomolecule bio that was isolated from a bacteria from Lake Vostok in 2015. Ah, yes, good stuff. <laughs> but on with the show. In the last 25 years have been absolutely amazing. And tonight, we will share with you a few of the globally significant events that have happened over the past 25 years. So on to the news. The news. Due to the melting of all of our permafrost, the Global Unemployment Commission decided that it was cheaper to build a permafrost research station on Mars than to pay all the permafrost researchers unemployment. <laughs> the male members of the Permafrost Old Researchers Network, or PORN, for those who like acronyms, are quite pleased to return to the home planet as men are for Mars. Because of the massive increase in shipping traffic across the North Pole, the pirates of the Caribbean have moved across the Arctic and are now a constant threat to research vessels in the area. All right, I'm afraid. However, the good news for Arctic mine researchers is that the pirates have to watch out for polar bear, as populations have skyrocketed thanks to the massive white PVC platforms anchored to the seafloor. Of course, those platforms that mimic sea ice are thanks BP as part of their $500 billion spy. <laughs> is dealing quite well with their new residents. Since the summer sea ice disappeared over the North Pole in 2013, as predicted by Al Gore, Santa Claus and the missus and his elves were forced to find a new home. After several months of intense negotiations with the Antarctic Treaty Commission, they finally agreed to let Santa and his posse build a new wing onto the South Pole in exchange for the reindeer working an additional 25 days a year to transport cargo from McMurdo to the South Pole. <laughs> successful Christmas Day launch of the Reindeer Burger in 2020. <laughs> McDonald's suffered an 85% drop in stocks to help gain back consumer support. They added Rudolph to their collection of Happy Meal characters. that the foundation was to promote oil drilling. But after about a year, she finally realized that the foundation was actually to help increase, increase Andrew's drilling in the Antarctic. <laughs> drill, drill, baby. The city of Tromsø, in way, announced today that they now have more polar researchers in the Paris of the North. And all of US and Canada combined, they attribute their success to the fabulous PR they received from hosting the Apex International Office. In this year's annual funding allocations, the UN's Polar Force Program, research dollars for the sci for polar science has dropped by oh. See, isn't it good I have him along? <laughs> the research dollars have dropped by 15% due to the decrease in the size of polar regions, which are now classified as re regions that remain below 15 degrees for more than three consecutive months of the year. <laughs> now, this year, Sweden and Finland ranked as the top funded countries due to the enormous effects of coastal erosion. Both Sweden and Finland now have access to the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> Another program that fared well in this year's funding allocation was the Education and Outreach Program. Science Conference. 
conference, you will remember that the support from the Research Council of Norway for Young Scientists set a new benchmark for all their conferences and programs. As part of this program, 400 young researchers received free accommodation. During the process of matching people with their potential roommates, thanks to Alex Taylor, where's Alex, where's Alex? Let's humiliate her. There she is! However, it was detected that about 100 of these young researchers no longer have their childhood teddy bear. <laughs> but thanks to the generous contribution from Surla and the Meta Tissue Corporation, all of these folks now have new teddy bears and can sleep soundly at night while derivatives and calculus equations <laughs> dance in their heads. <laughs> <laughs> recent, recent events have finally alerted the public to the global danger of emissions from the Arctic. Unfortunately, because of the uninterrupted eruption of the Icelandic volcano since 25 years, the public has focused on volcanic emissions, not on methane emissions. And thanks to the successful breeding program, the Arctic fox now has a brown coat in winter and a green coat in summer to blend with the changing vegetation. The Irish national rugby team liked these improved critters so much that they have now adapted them to be their team mascot. The International Science Data Commission issued a request today for anyone finding IPY label data accessible on the global network. We are desperate. Lost data. Yeah. No Please pictures. notify the IPY Data Committee. Please where's, notify where's them right now. The data? They would like to know how you did it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and perhaps some of you may remember this very classic <laughs> International Polar Year 4 diagram. You may also want to know what happened to that guy named Dave Carlson, oh, the who I don't know. very much encouraged and inspired young researchers and the creation of, well, Apex yeah. and many other things. Oh, is he? Yes, but what happened is he actually made a big bonfire <laughs> and he burned it and became a beekeeper <laughs> and is now instructing children all over the world on how to raise bees and design their own honeycomb charts.